Everyone knows the Irish coffee. The best ones are absolutely delicious. It's the final drink I served to win both my World Coffee and Good Spirits Championships, and it just so happens to be one of my favorite drinks in the world. Today we're gonna make two epic Irish coffees. One of them is served hot in the kind of traditional sense, and then the other is gonna be served ice cold, and it's very, very delicious. They're really easy recipes for you to follow at home, so you can make them and see which is your favorite. And now, let's make some coffee cocktails. Welcome back to the Coffee Cocktail channel, everyone. I'm Dan Fellows, and today we're gonna to be looking at the Irish coffee. So this recipe is gonna lay really good foundations, give us some really good templates to start experimenting with, but it's actually the first in a lot of episodes about the Irish coffee, including I'll be sharing my world championship winning Irish coffee recipes, so make sure you subscribe to the channel if that sounds like your kind of thing. So this episode's a little bit of an experiment, really, making a hot and a cold Irish coffee. So we're gonna have exactly the same fundamental ingredients, but the proportions, the glassware, and critically the temperature are gonna be completely different at complete opposite ends of the spectrum. Both balanced, both delicious, but completely different end results from the same ingredients. So when it comes to the ingredients, we're gonna keep things really simple. We're gonna go with an Irish whiskey. I'm going for Tullamore Dew, but you can go for your favorite Irish whiskey. And we wanna keep some of this in the freezer so it's really nice and cold for the cold Irish coffee. We want some brown sugar syrup at a two to one sugar to water ratio. I'm going with light muscovado sugar, but you can go for your favorite. We're gonna want some saline solution, as always. Double cream, which I'll talk about later. And then we're gonna want our coffee. And I like to go for a coffee with a kind of traditional flavor profile for this test, but in the future, we're gonna go for much more exotic and fruity and floral coffees to really change the kind of dynamic of the Irish coffee. And then to garnish, we're gonna want a little bit of your favorite spice. I'm going for nutmeg, but pick your poison. And then glassware wise, you wanna make sure you've got a frozen glass for your cold Irish coffee and a preheated glass for your hot Irish coffee. When it comes to the tools you'll need, I'll link them all in the description, all the bar tools I love to use, so you can pick these up for yourself, as well as the ingredients, which will be down there. But this is a really easy thing to make at home. You probably have most of the tools available anyway, so let's get started. So when it comes to the coffee, we wanna go for a kind of high strength, high extraction, high kind of flavor intensity in there. So we're gonna go with 225 grams of boiling water, and don't be afraid to use boiling water. This is totally fine. We wanna get that really nice high extraction in there to get plenty of body, plenty of kind of intensity, and really pull through the kind of dark chocolate nuttiness from the coffee. So to the 225 grams of boiling water, I'm gonna add 20 grams of coffee, which works out to be 89 grams per liter of coffee to water, which is quite high. Wanna really get these two introduced to each other so they really kind of get to know one another and there's no dry patches. And then we can leave this to steep for two to three minutes. Again, don't be afraid of extraction. It's kind of our friend. We're gonna balance it with the sugar syrup and the other ingredients. So that's doing its thing. The coffee, I'm going for a Christmas coffee from my friends at UE. So thank you for sharing this. And this is a kind of traditional take on the Irish coffee. So we're going for the kind of chocolate notes, the kind of dried fruit and figginess, kind of raisin flavor and some spice in there. But when you're buying a coffee for this, you can go on your roaster's website, have a look at the flavor profile of the coffee and go for something down that kind of traditional pathway with those kind of more common flavors you find in an Irish coffee, because we're gonna get experimenting with this in later episodes. So when it comes to the brew method, you wanna use something like a Clever Dripper or even a cafetiere or maybe even an AeroPress, although that will be quite full, so you might need a bypass. But you wanna have some of that immersion so the coffee and the water really get to know each other and you get really nice high body in the coffee. So now the coffee's over here steeping and doing its thing, we can start building the hot Irish coffee. So we can ditch the water from our mixing glass, which is now really nice and hot. And this is what we want because we wanna get that really nice high temperature. So Irish whiskey wise, I'm going for Tullamore Dew, but you can choose your favorite Irish whiskey and we're gonna go 25 ml for the hot Irish coffee. And I stress the hot because we actually vary the kind of proportions between the hot and cold, which is quite important. You can choose your favorite Irish whiskey, but you do wanna go for something with those kind of vanilla notes, the kind of spice, toffee, kind of generic flavor characteristics you'd look for in an Irish coffee, because like I say, we're gonna experiment more in the future. And this gives us a really good base to get an understanding with. Sugar wise, we're gonna go 15 mils of our two to one brown Muscovado sugar syrup in here. And again, this is for the hot Irish coffee, which I stress once again for the same reason and this will be the kind of base sweetness in the drink. And this has got a really nice kind of toffee, fudgy, butterscotchy kind of flavor and sweetness, 
which ties in really well with the coffee and the whiskey. We're gonna go one gram of saline solution made with one part salt to five parts water. And this just bridges everything together. And I'll link a video all about seasoning drinks at the end, which I think is quite a useful database of how you can really tweak and refine your recipes. And now we've got the base of our Irish coffee, we can add the coffee to it. So this is gonna take a few minutes to draw through and we'll put it to one side. And in the meantime, we're gonna make the cold Irish coffee. So for the cold Irish coffee, I need to head to the freezer. So from the freezer, I've got two very important things. The first of which is the same whiskey, just extremely cold. So the Tullamore Dew once again. And the second is one of these bad boys, which is called a hyper chiller. So you might've seen these doing the rounds on the kind of competition circuit, originally designed for wine, I believe, but works perfectly for your cold Irish coffee. So in here, we've got chambers of frozen water and then a chamber in the middle, which has contact with the really cold surfaces, but doesn't actually add any dilution to your drink. So this is really useful and we're gonna build the drink in here to get a rapid chill. But if you don't have this, you can just chill down the coffee to begin with, use really cold ingredients, maybe use some whiskey stones, which I suspect a lot of you have with compound chilling now becoming a very big thing. And this is a really good use for those. So as long as you chill it down without any dilution, you're gonna be grand, but I really do like the hyper chiller, it's sick. So in we go with our whiskey, but for the cold Irish coffee, we actually wanna add a little bit more whiskey. So whereas before we added 25 mils, now I'm adding 30. And this is quite an important thing. So when you think of hot alcohol, it's got that really kind of intense, <laughs> hot, boozy, over the top characteristic. But when we chill things down, we get much less of that. So we really want the whiskey flavor to carry through so we can get away with adding a little bit more whiskey to this, which I think is a good thing, but drink responsibly. And then when it comes to the sugar, Again, we had 15 mils before. In the cold version, we're going for 25 mils. So slightly more again. And this might sound like too much, but to go off on a little bit of a tangent, when we think about things that are really extremely cold, like ice cream or a really nice cold glass of something like Coca-Cola or a soda, the sweetness feels balanced. But when they warm up and come to sort of room temperature, they feel overpoweringly sweet, really kind of sickly and just not good. So if we made this Irish coffee into a hot Irish coffee, it'd be way too sweet, but because we're serving it nice and cold, we get really delicious balance. And this is quite an important kind of deviation from the original recipe. We're gonna go again with one gram of saline solution for the very same reason, just to bring everything together. And now we've got the whiskey, the sugar and the saline in here. I'm gonna add my coffee. So this is one I brewed earlier in exactly the same way completely chilled down so we get a really nice cold, cold Irish coffee. But you get lots of the kind of intense flavors from the brew method and now we can give this a little mix. So I'm just gonna leave this in the hyper chiller to get really, really nice and cold. Give it a little swirl so it mixes together because you don't want any kind of separation between ingredients. And then I'll leave this to one side with the other hot Irish coffee which is just about ready. So now we need to prepare our cream. So in here, I've got exactly 200 grams of double cream and weighing your double cream is actually really important to get consistency across results. I also know with this particular cream, which is an organic double cream, it takes about 50 shakes to get exactly the texture I'm looking for, which is kind of lightly whipped, but not butter, which no one wants. And a few little pro tips, when you buy cream, don't shake it in the shop. Don't, when you put it in the fridge and bring it out, shake it. When you've got it in your shopping bag, don't shake it, because all of these count towards your shaking quota. I'm such a nerd. I've spent a lot of time looking into this and it does really help. And we wanna make sure we shake this consistently so that we get the same results as close as possible every single time. So you're gonna to have to bear with me while I shake this 50 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think that was 50. You might have to slow that down and watch it again. I usually count 20 twice and then 10, but randomly I changed it. Anyway, we digress. Now we've got our cream, pour this through a fine strainer so that it's nice and bubble free. And then once we have our cream all prepared, this actually holds pretty well. You can leave it sit in for a minute or two. It's no problem at all. We can start building the hot and the cold Irish coffees. So as I said at the beginning, freezing cold glass for the cold drink preheat a glass for the warm drink. I'm gonna dump the water from here. And now we can assemble our hot and cold Irish coffees. And a pro tip, you don't wanna move these around too much. And I wanna get some really nice beauty shots of these drinks. So I'm gonna build them exactly where they go. So in we go 
with, let's start with the hot, which everyone's kind of familiar with. So to recap the recipe for the hot, we've got 25 mils of Irish whiskey, 15 mils of two to one brown sugar syrup, one gram of saline solution, and then the coffee with 20 grams of coffee to 225 grams of boiling water. And then we're gonna to top this with our precisely shaken double cream, which takes a bit of practice, but can be done without a spoon, like so. Oh yes, it flowed absolutely perfectly. And then now we've got the cold Irish coffee, which is quite different, quite unique, made with no dilution chilling into a frozen glass. And now we've got the cold Irish coffee. So this one should also float. The sugar really helps with the floating. And yeah, there we have the hot and the cold Irish coffees. Finish them both with a little grating of spice if you like. Don't have to, it's just nice for the aroma. And here we have two Irish coffees, one hot, one cold. I'm gonna start with the hot because this is the kind of familiar reference point that everyone knows and loves. Ooh, that's so good. It's just a perfectly balanced Irish coffee, plenty of whiskey, plenty of sweetness, but not too much, and plenty of good quality coffee flavor coming through. Nice kind of layer of cream, but again, not too much. And now we try something a bit different, the cold Irish coffee. So we've got 30 mils of Irish whiskey, 25 mils of our Muscovado sugar syrup, try not to spill this, and then the same amount of coffee and cream. And here's the cold Irish coffee. It's so good. Like completely different to this in such a good way. This is like warm and comforting and chocolatey. This is kind of fruity, still got some good quality chocolate in there, but it's just that extra sweetness really helps. Oh, you have to try this. This is so good. And there we have two banging Irish coffees. I love it, it's so good. So these are really good templates for you to play around with different whiskies, whatever you have in your cupboard, make sure you give them a try. Different sugars and different coffees. And by kind of playing around with these different ingredients, you get completely different Irish coffees. So play around with them, make the hot, make the cold. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer, which ingredients you go for, and I hope you enjoy these Irish coffees. So if you've enjoyed this, make sure you subscribe to the channel, which I'll put here. And if you wanna see more coffee cocktail recipes, I will put some more here and here for you to enjoy. So I'm gonna get back into these. I think I'm gonna go back to the cold Irish coffee because it's super refreshing and I'll see you soon. Cheers.